Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. And today's video is going to be on creatures and aliens. Uh, mainly aliens. These are actually characters that I'm playing around with for uh, uh, the Blackstone Eternal comic. So, you know, I'm basically roughing out these characters and trying to get a feel for, you know, just some different alien type esque characters that I can bring into the book from time to time. You know, maybe a whole race of characters or just a you know, protagonist, antagonist, whatever, you know, so, um, first off, what I do here is just kind of, you know, rough out a few forms, I've got general ideas in mind of some of these characters, uh, but for the most part, I'm just kind of playing with, uh, you know, mixing up components, moving things around, kind of just seeing whatever comes to mind, you know, getting the old, uh, imagination working, so, so here I, uh, roughing out kind of a, a bigger kind of cumbersome you know weightier type character somebody with uh some armor you know more of a you know barbarian type creature uh, and i'm doing this in photoshop uh, because i'm going to digitally paint these i normally don't do that for the comic because the comics uh you know pencil and ink or you know digital ink di di digital pencil and ink sorry <laughs> so uh, i've been drawing for a while so i'm a little little uh out of it um, these actually took, you know, almost six hours, which is, uh, a little bit ridiculous. Um, that's why I've sped it up dramatically here to, uh, fly through it and kind of narrate to you. But, um, generally I wouldn't take that long on something like that, but, um, I started thinking it would be a good way to show the process. And so I started, uh, delving into it a little bit further. So it is what it is. Um, I think they came out overly, uh, you know, well or decent enough, you know, um, but it allows me to, you know, just kind of play around with these ideas and see what works and what doesn't. Um, so, yeah, using Photoshop here to digitally sketch it. Um, Photoshop's actually gotten a lot better over the past few years for digital sketching. I used to absolutely hate it as far as drawing. Painting was always nice, but I could never get it to draw really well. But now with the way they have the brushes, the rotate screen, it actually draws pretty darn well. So got to be thankful for that so now I'm adding in some gray tone there I throw in some loose backgrounds to each just because it helps me to add value to the rest of the uh, the character in the drawing you know so I basically you know I'd love to sit there and detail that entire thing but they would have really taken a while then so uh, I just sit here and you know drop in that background so that when I add my highlights mainly uh, and all my values to the character, it pops out a little bit more. So, just a uh, you know tip for you if you ever want to digitally paint it, it, it almost helps to either paint on a gray tone background or a color, uh, you know, or just do what I did there and just loosely, you know, paint something in. So I just kind of uh, go back and forth, adding tone and, and value and doing some smudging. Obviously, I actually smudge like crazy and um, just keep working up the form and sometimes I you know I struggle a bit and I sit there and try to figure out you know where do I want to see some depth in this what what uh, specularity is the material of the armor is there a lot of indentations and rough spots and I just kind of keep pinballing around till I get something decent um, and actually in retrospect to this character I wish I would have spent a little bit more time with some of the texturing just because you know, you'll see it when it's done. I think it comes out okay, but I think it could have been uh, better. Um, one of the things about digital, though, that, that I'm actually really enjoying now and it, at the point that I'm at is I'll actually go back and revisit my digital drawings or paintings and add to them. So I'll take knowledge that I've gained. You know, I might learn something next month, and then I'll go back to certain paintings like probably this one, like I'm talking about, and I'll add certain elements that will really make it pop. So... Um, and it's all good for the portfolio, you know, so just keep that in mind. That's one of the really neat things about digital is you can always go back and revisit those, you know, those paintings that you think could have just been a touch better, you know, and something was lacking. And I still don't know what it is, you know, on this particular one, but I'll figure it out, I, I suppose, hopefully. So you see I kind of maneuver the hand there and change that on this squid-looking dude. I still haven't thought of a... A name for him actually or this breed or whatever he is um, we'll just call him squidius or something crazy 
but yeah, just uh, keep refining the, uh, the line work. And on this one, I actually uh, took the line work a step further. Um, I think because I actually really like the design of this character, and I'll probably end up introducing this one sooner. Just, you know, and I know it's kind of silly that I would pick that for the storyline based on the design of the character, but a lot of times when I design a character like this and I draw it out, uh, something about that process starts to give me storyline ideas. And I know that's probably a little bit uh, counterproductive or something. Like you should probably, you know, write your entire story down first. But And I do that majority of the time. But sometimes I draw something and it sparks ideas for creativity and for storyline um, ideas. So... Again, I know that's probably not the right way to go about it, but it's just something I do occasionally, and it seems to work. And I can kind of feel that with this character, where I think that there's something kind of eerie but cool about him. So, you know, it could definitely be a, a cool villain, or or maybe it's one of those misunderstood characters where they look like a villain, but they're actually a pretty neat guy. And, you know, they're fun, they'd be fun to hang out with and, you know, shoot the shoot. So... Who knows? You know, we'll see what happens. But so here I'm using a quick mask. Uh, for you, for those of you that don't know, you just hit Q and you can draw out your selection. Uh, it was kind of silly because I could have just drew an outline around the character, one solid outline, and then it would have been much quicker. And then I fill in the the character with a gray, and it gives me a base tone to work with, and then I paint up from there. And you see, I switch around from like soft brush, hard brush. Uh, chalk brush whatever you know I only have about eight or nine brushes and I really prefer it that way I don't spend all this time digging through a large assortment of brushes which was driving me crazy before so if you notice that's why and also when people ask me now hey Rob what brush are you using I got it right on my DeviantArt you can find it at ramstudios1.deviantart and uh, you can download those brushes it's an ABR file throw it in your system and you're up and running and you can follow along and do exactly what I'm doing or whatever. There's not a bunch of complex brushes for you to wonder if I change something or I'm doing something different. So at any rate, that's that's what that's all about. So the way I'm painting him is actually the way I prefer uh, to, to paint. A lot of times is where I drop in some larger um, kind of spot colors of value, if that makes any sense. I just kind of you know lay in a, a larger tone uh, almost like I'm cell shading and something, you know, in, in comic or animation form, but I'm not. And you can see it on the chest there how there's two to three main, you know, great answer tones. And then I just blend those in and I keep adding to that process. Uh, it doesn't work well for texturing. Well, I guess it could, but you'd have to do it in a lot smaller increments. Um, I usually stipple when I do my texturing or whatever. But the, uh, the reason I like doing that, it's easy to work your form up and get an idea for your, uh, your shapes of shadows or your, your amount of uh, uh, defining your planes anyways. So it's, it's an easy way to define your planes, I guess would be the best way to say it. So I'll try that, see if it works for you. I, I actually like it. Then I immediately go in and start you know doing that white highlight on the edge because it helps me, uh, again, round out the form and see into it more. And then I just start overlapping strokes for my texture of the tentacles, texture of the skin. Those are all just kind of a, you see I got the brush turned down really far. And I just kind of slowly blend over top of itself with various tones. And, and usually just black and white going back and forth. And I can usually build up some kind of texture, some, you know, some, some grit to it or whatever I need. And I kind of envision this guy being a little bit more like, you know, transparent skin and, you know, maybe you could see through him a little bit. You know, he's obviously a little bit aquatic looking, you know. Um, he's actually a lot aquatic looking. I, I would say I took kind of the concept of, you know, the old school uh, aliens or whatever, you know, typical alien look, you know, big head, big eyes, and then also gave him these squid-like features. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe like crab fingernails or whatever so he's very much uh, aquatic looking along with the old school traditional look of a of an alien which are always creepy to me for some reason aliens scare me I should think why in the world did you pick uh, a science fiction alien book to draw and the reason for that 
in case you were wondering, I'll answer my own question there. Uh, is basically just because I thought, you know, I want something that I can always draw and not have to get bored of and switch to a different uh, character or topic. You know, hopefully this book does really well over time and I can always draw the character and continue to build them. And I thought, man, science fiction, or I should say uh, extraterrestrial is great for that because, you know, there's, there's no shortage of ideas when it comes to space and you know, you can just keep going and going and going, obviously. So you can create any type of character you want to see. Um, you know, and I love doing that. I love making characters like I'm doing here. It's probably my favorite thing to do when it comes to drawing comics and digitally painting and things like that. I love trying to come up with something that, you know, I can't say that hasn't been done. I think everything's been done. But it's got its own little twist, my own little take on it, you know. So that's why I picked a extraterrestrial character for that you know so here just building up those tones and you know here I'm adding in some like veiny look and then blending it down and toning it down uh, that's actually a good way to do your your veins on anything but I'm trying to make it look like he's a little bit he or she I don't know what this is but <laughs> a little bit transparent but it's also a good way to do the regular veins for your uh, muscular anatomy just so you know and now I'll work on the line. Now I kind of shortcut on this one because I, I took a little bit too long on the last one as far as the digital painting of it. So this one I do a little shortcut method. I just draw the exterior line around, uh, cleaning it up a little bit, but pretty much just using it to create my selection and delete the, the sketch lines on the outside of it, which I'll do here in a second, and then merge it all down and paint it gray. And that's really all you need. I, I overdid the line work on the previous one, but I could probably use that later on for some kind of more, you know, just for line work uh, illustration needs. But for, for painting, you really don't have to refine your lines that much. As long as you can see the idea, you can start painting away, you know. Um, sometimes I think it's beneficial to leave it a little bit sketchier because you can... Um, paint a little bit more free-flowing and come up with ideas more in the paint stage process. If it's too drawn out, then you're going to stick really rigid to that line work and um, it almost doesn't leave any room for embellishment or whatever. So using the chalk brush here, it's it's pretty much my favorite brush. It's it's between that and the uh, just the regular hard round brush. You know, a lot of people ask me like, uh, you know, what brush do you like? And those are it. And you know, I'll use a soft brush for overall glancing shadows, and you see I did a lot of that background real quick with a large soft brush. But, I don't know, I just really like the chalk brush. It's it's easy to use, and it, it builds in some texture, and it's it's pretty cool, in my, uh, my opinion. And the only neat thing about the hard round brush is if you're trying to do stuff and not add too much uh, uh, texturing, then that's, you know, the hard round's a little bit better for that it leaves a little bit less uh, artifacts in the painting. And here I start shading this kind of like I would draw a uh, uh, pen and ink drawing and then I see that it looks almost a little too uh, rigid for a painting so I start blending those lines back but you know there's really no way to make a mistake when you're painting because you just basically can paint back and forth. There I use the liquify to move things around but you essentially just keep adding tone and you go back and forth if you paint this way I, I like to I prefer to paint this way but it's uh you know you're just you can tone up tone down tone or you know tone in your high or shoot in your highlights and put in your shadows and go back and forth so there's really no messing up if you if you just kind of get some you know get something out of it each time and just keep repainting um I don't think you can even really back yourself in a corner with this stuff. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it seems like if you just keep painting, you'll eventually get there. But um, but I, I don't know. There's definitely times when I get done with it and I look at it and go, this just isn't as good as I thought it would be. You know, and that that's, um, usually happens in the color stage for me, though. I, I like the grayscale. Like, I, something about painting in gray tone to me um, always seems to make, you know, makes sense, and very rarely do I get done and go, oh, that's just horrible, you know, why, why did I waste that time, but, uh, 
but the coloring I still kind of struggle with. I'm, I'm not much of a colorist. And I, I'll, you'll see here in a bit when I start to color, I always oversaturate. I have to desaturate when I'm done. Um, I'm like a little kid with a box of crayons for some reason. You know, it's like I just grab the way, you know, way too bright of colors and, you know, I'm just having fun with it. But, you know, it's still something I'm uh, aspiring to be better at. So hopefully uh, with the progression of this channel and these books and, you know, you'll see all that. And hopefully one day we can we can all look back and go, hey, man, remember when you sucked at coloring and now you're halfway decent. So here just painting in some highlights and... uh you know, just keep adding to it and playing with it, trying to add little bits of detail here. I, I kind of like these char this character too. I want to make this like a race of characters where they're uh, they're all obsessed with technology. I, I was so tempted to put like a little glowing orb in his hand that was like a little techie orb. I should have did it. I'm kicking myself now, but this thing started getting pretty long, so I was just kind of taking shortcuts at the end here. But um, but I I want to make these characters where they're so obsessed with technology that you know, things get thrown, you know, wait a second, kind of like us, you know, we're so obsessed with technology that everything gets kicked to the curb, you know, hopefully not, but uh, these guys do it in, in a, a really extreme manner, and, you know, that would be kind of fun to write, you know, and, and it would really just be an extension of us. So, yeah, here's uh, here's my uh, crazy colors or whatever, my overly saturated colors. Um, what I do is I add a color layer over top. I start that way and then I change because I actually shouldn't have did that. But I add a color layer over top and I'll do one or two of those and then I'll add like another overlay layer over top of that. And sometimes I get some pretty decent results with that. But here I feel like it just, you know, especially this one, it doesn't end up popping the way that I like and I hoped for. And I start playing with the levels and trying to paint in deeper tones in the background. Um, and, and really what I think would have helped is if I actually just paint, made a copy of the characters and painted on top of the layer, um, you know, which I do by the end of the character and I go back and try to adjust what I'm doing here. But, you know, there's so many different ways to do this stuff. You just got to play around with it. Um, and, and these aren't really what I would call high detail paintings. These are kind of mediocre detail. I was trying to actually do the three characters with color in three hours and um, the reason being is is you oftentimes have to time yourself so that when you have a, a deadline oriented, oriented job uh, you can deliver a certain amount of detail um, give everything kind of a once over and still make it doable and that's really popular in concept art storyboards it's a must you know so you, you got to think about things like that and that's actually I was trying to combine a little bit of all that you know make some new characters for the Blackstone comic, make some new samples for my, uh, you know, portfolio, but also do it in a certain amount of time so that I can gauge, you know, what I can uh, complete. And, you know, they, they come out all right. They're they're decent. You know, I, I wouldn't say that uh, they're done, that they, they could actually be worked on further. Like I said, I'll probably revisit them. Um, I think I would definitely like to take the middle aquatic squid dude and um, paint into him further and really make that a, a full finished painting. I might do that. So here I just add some final uh, touches and, you know, play with the saturation and keep going back and forth and touching it up. So at any rate, I thank you for watching and I appreciate all the support. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. And uh, more stuff is on the way. You know, I like to make videos, so more of them are coming at you. Thanks for watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun. We'll talk to you.